let people in as I can. So welcome to fucking feral, fucking magical planning. I have done this workshop at least, oh, at least five times before, at least small group, prior business. Um, I did it one time for a Christian group when I was in a church long, long time ago with another life, another life. I was another man's wife, you know, all that shit. So when you think about planning years, we're always hung up on months, dates, holidays, um, what else? Oh, family obligations, all that bullshit when you plan a year. And then we have this thing where every year I have you pick a word. Pick your word. Pick any word. Pick the word that meets your needs. It's like Vanna White and I'm turning fucking tiles. Do you know what you want? Do you know what your word is? Pick a vow, motherfuckers. Here we go. We're not doing that this year. Get your panties out your ass crack. Unclench. Woosah. Open that vagina. Let it breathe. Get some air up in there. Let it circulate. Some of you bitches, this should be the year you air that thing out. Get a little coochie action. Loosen up your shit, okay? So if you are around really, really tight and I really annoy you, go get laid, okay? Or get a vibrator. That is my advice to start off your coming year, okay? You need to get laid or be laid by yourself once a month, okay? I think that will keep your shit in line. That will keep your feral fucking coochie energy rolling. So if you are intense this year and you have a complaint to me, the first thing I'm going to ask is when was the last time you got coochie laid? And you'll probably shut up because you won't want to talk any further than that. So <laughs> that's how we're going to start this. So when I approach the book and I look in this book, and I'm looking back through it, you know, and it goes to it goes to the printers and I'm saying my Hail Marys because, you know, I just threw this one for the fences. We'll see what the fuck happens. When I'm doing this, the one thing that I have channeled through this entire situation is don't do it till it feels right. And so much of our witch education, we have been taught what is right and what is wrong. So... Here's what I'm going to ask you to do with that. I'm going to ask you to take that piece of dental floss, that invisible dental floss right now, put it in one ear and bring it out the other. And I want you to pull all that shit out your brain. We're going to start this year like that. Okay. We're going to unlearn the conditioning of the patriarchy in our craft. Okay. So this is going to be very uncomfortable for some of you. I have a really good friend, Casey. She's over there in the DGC. I call her my Pandora planner. Everything is by her planner. She's got a planner for everything. And I love this about Casey. But if you know anything about me, I am fly by the seat of my pants, Florence. I follow my whims. I follow my whimsy. And as the little book when we were children, Harold and his purple fucking crayon. <laughs> Have you meet Harriet in her purple fucking crayon? Because that would be me. Okay? Fun fact. I have never been on time for anything in my entire fucking life. Including my weddings. Both of them. So, does that tell you the kind of person I am? Book was behind schedule. This class PDF was behind schedule today. I was sitting here. I had it ready to go. I looked at it. And I'm like, this is fucking junk. Chucked it in the fucking bucket. Didn't like it. Didn't like what it looked like. Didn't like where it was going. I had 12 months in it and I wasn't content with that. What I'm going to encourage you this year is to take small bites. Small bites at your craft. Small bites on your alignment. Small bites on your intentions. And really move into this space. And the space I want you to embrace is seasons bring purpose. Each individual season brings a purpose to the earth, okay? We all know this, right? There's a season to plant. There's a season to harvest. There's a season to be dormant. And the wheel shows us that by what happens outside of us, okay? So if you embrace this concept of the wheel, which is where we're going here at being feral women, like a calendar doesn't tell me what to do anymore. The morning sun tells me what to do. Just like you don't dress your kids in shorts when it's 35 degrees, you're not going to be trying to grow shit when everything is barren and dead outside. Make sense? You're going to feed yourself because there's nothing left out there to feed you, correct? So purpose yields will. 
when you have a purpose, you have a reason to be. How many women have you heard? Oh, my kids are gone. I have no purpose. I hear this all the time. My spouse doesn't love me anymore. What's the purpose of dressing up? What's the purpose of going here anymore? I don't get fed. I don't get what I need. Fun fact, you determine your purpose. No one else. You feel in, you sit into it, you hold this sacred tension till you feel the intention rise. Tension brings intention. Okay, so this is how I'm going to describe this. When you have a rope, and you're holding both ends of the rope. And when you let go of one, the other hand flies out of balance, correct? If you are not pulling some kind of request out of the universe, the universe has no reason to back you with an intention. It sees no purpose. Some of you are doing open-ended spell work. Oh, it'll be, it is what it is. It will be what it will be. That's not very fucking magical of you. Kind of sounds like you fucking gave up. It is what it is. I can't change anything. I can't do anything. Well, you're wasting your money on classes. You're wasting your money on planners. You're wasting your money and your fucking energy with people, places, and things if you have no reason to be. The next thing you need to think is when your will yields potential. So you have this intention, this will, this wanting inside of you to make something happen, you now have inertia. You have a purpose. You have inertia. You're moving towards this intention. And once your intention is fulfilled, you have reached the purpose of that season and you have reached your magical step to the next. When you are moving through these seasons, you have three months. You have three 30 days windows. Uh, I think that would be, oh, yeah, three moon phases. Probably four if the universe is treating you right that month. Correct? Then you get a super moon and everybody loves a super moon because we're super witches on super moons, right? Now, most of you are so overwhelmed by the energy, you can't fucking function. Most of you are so overwhelmed by trying to shove it all in three days, you end up doing nothing. You are suffering from which ADHD? You can't stay on focus with your intention. You overcompensate when it's in the window. You get into the window and you realize I haven't fucking done anything I need to fucking do. And then what do you do? I know what you do because I've done it. You get your bath, you put on your jammies, you read your dirty book. I know you bitches read your dirty books. And then you go to bed and you say, fuck it. You don't do it at all because that would be too much work that you weren't prepared for. Maybe next moon. But what if you looked at these individual seasons as there's not a next moon? I have to get this done at this moon. I have to get this done at this moon. And I have to get this done at this moon. With seasonal planning, you are not going November to November. You are going November to January. What do I tell you guys? How do you eat an elephant? One fucking bite at a time. You are trying to consume a megalodon and you can barely eat the trout out of the local stream. Magic is not on how big of shit you can accomplish. It's how well you meet the needs that are coming up in your life daily, monthly, quarterly. If we embrace this concept and we take every season to just set an intention for the season, choose what you want to celebrate in that season. You don't have to celebrate it all. I fucking said it. I fucking said it. Okay. If you're not feeling a season, you're not feeling a celebration, do what you can to get through that season. Some of you are going through some serious deep shit. If you're doing ancestor work right now, I bet you're looking at me going, bitch, I can't even plan until next week, let her know a fucking month from now. Because things are changing drastically every day. You have to remember You are a human being 
living a human experience and a goddess sees great things for you. So like any good mother, what's she going to do? Push. She's that pushy mother. She's like, come on, honey, you can do better. How many of you feel that? You make your plans and you feel like you failed someone and you don't know who you failed. You failed someone and then you quit. You feel stuck and then you quit. Oh, I'm a failure. I can't do this. I can't stay on track. I can't make these things happen. Okay. So for the sake of argument, you're a failure and you can't make things happen. Okay. Let's take this argument. Let's devil's advocate this one. All right. You have a planner, those of you that have purchased this planner in front of you, that only has six months in it. And I made it even more simple. It only has two seasons. And when you look at this, how many intentions do you need to set for a season? You ready? You ready? One. If your intention is get through this, write that as your fucking intention. Get through the season. Get to the other side. For some of us, there are times in our life we are simply getting the fuck through it. No other reason, no other purpose. Uh, you all watched your vulva do it last year. Get the fuck through this. My goal for 2023, 2024 is no one dies. I'm good with that. I'm going to take that one with me, okay? No one dies. No one gets left behind, okay? It's been a rough fucking year. And you learn to be thankful for the miracles that do happen. Mm -hmm. And you learn to be thankful for the people that you can rely on in those miracle spaces. So when you're doing these plannings, I gave you a whole bunch of really cool shit in the beginning. So like yeah, those of you who have the planner know you looked into this and you're like, so he has a to-do list that says fucking feral shit to do. Yes, I do. Your goals are three feral goddess goals. These are not civilized accommodations I'm asking of you. I mean, I gave you a dot journal page that says sigil symbols and fucking doodles. Okay, do you understand where we're going here? I want you to start living your craft exactly as that, your craft. Crafts need created. And the most important thing when you are a crafter, and you will know this, I mean, you, we all praise Jeanette and these fucking beautiful things she creates. It's the passion. It's the passion. It's the intention. It's the love. It's the drive. It's the obsession. Dare we say it's the inspiration that makes us want to do our craft. If you are not inspired, if you are not connected, if you are not alive and aligned, you are not a five aspect working witch. You're not. Now, here's the easy part about it. Get fucking aligned. Do what brings you joy. Do what brings you happiness. Not what Sage Goddess tells you to do. Not what I tell you to do. Not some other random TikToker fucking tells you to do. What makes you shake your witchy little ass and feel like you're in the zone? Because you all have been there. You all know what it is. If putting on the makeup, lighting the candles, and having that moment at your altar is what you need, maybe that's your alignment point at this time. If carving a stick and painting your face with the ash from the burnt ash is your shit, that's your alignment point. We all have different alignment points. This circle would not exist if we were all at the same point, ever. But the beauty of a sacred circle is everyone else is at a different place and we pick up the slack to meet them. One hand up, one hand down. This is how you do it. This is how you create community. You accept people for where they are and move into that space. If we are all working on a sacred seasonal wheel, there's no need to fight, a, fight about Sabbaths. There's no need to fight about dates. There's no need to fight about practices and ancestries and closed practices because we're focusing on a fucking realistic thing we can see. We can see the wheel changing. 
if we all live in the same hemisphere, and there's one or two ladies here that do not, we're all living in the same hemisphere, 96% of us, okay? We all know it's winter. Just because South winter looks different than North winter, it's still all fucking winter, okay? We're still all closer to the North Pole than we are to the South Pole, correct? This is what you need to remember. Stop thinking about how fucking different everyone is and what everyone else practices around you and start thinking how similar we all are. We all have the same needs. We all have the same elemental needs, air, fire, water, and earth. What lacks is the connection that feeds your spirit. You all go to these fairs and people read your auras and they're doing Reiki over on TikTok and pulling shit out of the air. And these people know nothing about you. Nothing. These people you're connecting to know nothing fucking about you. They are not magical to you. There is no personal connection to you. Stop giving your power to people who are hijacking it through social media. Live in your season. Live in your elements. Feed your own magic and put up your fucking boundaries. Stop giving your power away. You wonder why you're stuck. You wonder why you can't move on. It's because you don't have enough inertia left in your tank to fuel you because you're out dicking around in every other place. You know, there was this thing we were taught in the 80s and 90s. I'm dating myself. All you younger girls, just cover your ears because I'm about to say some old lady shit. When you sleep with someone, you sleep with everybody else they slept with. When you fucking magic with someone, you're magicking with everyone else they're magicking with. And I guarantee fucking to you, you don't know everyone they're magicking with. People have magical connections that would curl your toes if you knew them. And not everyone is your friend. Be more choosy of where you lie down and share your energy. Your energy is as sacred as your vagina. Remember that. Probably more so. And many of you will share your energy with any motherfucker that wants to pull your cards for free. That's dangerous. That's dangerous shit. Just because something's free doesn't mean it's good. I sit here, the queen of organizations, and give away free classes all the time. And I'm going to tell you right now, not everyone you come across is authentic and wants to give you something. They're looking to take. This seasonal situation will keep you more aligned with the turn of the earth, the goddess movement, and the ancestral lineage than you will ever accomplish any other way. I assure you of that. Because you're going to come in contact with the things in your life that you desperately need to have in your practice. How many of you, when you go outside and you walk, find exactly what you needed to do your ritual? How does it fall at your feet? How does it just align? Oh, maybe because you're in nature. And maybe because the goddess knows you're there to do your work. And maybe your work only requires simple things you can find. What a fucking concept. Everybody is out looking for something to buy and something to add to their practice that they really don't fucking need. You know, the Christians believe this God will provide thing. I really, in my heart, believe the goddess provides. If I need something, she will show me the way to find it, no matter what it is. I'm very dedicated to the concept this year of moving through this seasonally and staying seasonally. So will we celebrate Yule? Yes, we'll celebrate Yule because those are things you need to know. But will I focus all my intentions on Yule or will I focus my intentions on the joy and the emotion that time of year is supposed to provide? 
And do yourself a favor in this seasonal pool. Stop remembering the bad things that happen in every fucking season. Put them to rest. Have a funeral each season for the memories that no longer serve you. Yes, you went through things, but no, you don't live there anymore. You want to grow? You have to fucking let it go. Sorry, that's how it works. It's not a fucking option. Some of you are so mad and so fucking angry, and I can taste it because I've been there, and I live there, and it's fucking hard. When you don't want to let something go because you're afraid if you let it go, maybe it'll come back, that's trauma, and you need help. Not just shadow work. You need fucking registered help. A doctor to see and discuss those things. Shadow work is not a substitution for medical care. Witchcraft is not a substitution for actual work Mm -hmm. and follow-up. Intentions require legroom and work. You have to have a fucking plan. I can't sit here and go, I'm going to be a million-dollar business and watch Real Housewives every day on Peacock and eat cookies. It's not going to fucking happen. Claudia wouldn't make beautiful fucking pottery if she sat at home all day and watched television and fucked around reading books. You have got to work to hit your fucking goals. Seasonal goals are important. What do you want to gather? For those of you that are building apothecaries, what can you gather in winter? A whole hell of a lot. There are a lot of things you can gather in winter. Bark is an amazing item to have in your apothecary. You know, you can use bark for protection magic. So maybe in this planner, we add a paper in there for things you forage in this season. And you keep record of them and you write the date you got them. This is not only a planner. This is a working grimoire for those of you who have never done it before. This is a baby grimoire or as i'm going to call you guys from now on in the new brooms feral fucking flyers because you just started flying and i'm gonna kick your asses out of the nest so you better start flapping your fucking wings you might hit the ground a couple times but you'll learn your lessons we all did it i still fucking hit the ground and smack my head believe me failure is part of attempting But it's not failure unless you stop. It's just a setback. So when we are moving into these seasonal areas, I want you to really start thinking about this this page right here. This is a good one. So this is a habit tracker that I adapted the top to meet my needs. Because after all, this this is my PDF, right? So I can do whatever the fuck I want, right? So we did feral fucking habits. Do your fucking witch work. Do you know what the beauty about this is? You can print off as many fucking copies as you want because this is yours now. You own it. Isn't that great for us? I fucking love that. So you can do as many times as you want. There's no trademark on here. There's no footer or header. You can decorate these the way you want. I recommend if you're going to put these in a binder, print them on cardstock. Get a good pack of cardstock and print them on cardstock. Send them to Staples to have them print them on good paper for you. When you're doing these things, I want you to write the things that you really want to focus on for that season. Each season should have this sheet. Just because I don't have it in that section doesn't mean you don't put it in that section. Oh, my God. Yes, I'm asking you to do this. I'm asking you to do cognitive skills and do some problem solving and figure out where the fucking papers go. Oh my God, I can't believe Sissy didn't fucking do this for us. I'm not doing it for you anymore. You're big fucking girls. You all pee potty, wipe your hiney, light your candles, set your altars so I know you can fucking handle this. Am I right? Say, yeah, we got this, boss. Okay? Got it. I gave you a coloring page that you can sit and color so it makes you feel better because that always makes me feel better. I don't know about you. My, I have a whole beautiful coloring book this year of Hocus Pocus coloring that made me feel better for six months. So I gave you an understanding of the season of winter. Okay, this is a brief understanding. I encourage you, when you go into the new tab on the website, 
that will appear at the end of the week to print off papers that you will need. Okay, as people who registered for this workshop got the PDF, you're going to get a code to get into that tab. It's going to have additional note paper. It's going to have additional information loaded randomly with Sabbat information, mood information that you can put into these planners. I'm really vested in this. This is important. You need to have a working planner that you can use. Did, did you hear what I just said? I want you to rewind that, and I want you to actually listen to what I just said, okay? This is a planner you're going to use. This one isn't going to sit on your shelf because it's not fancy enough to sit on your shelf. It's not pretty enough to sit on your shelf. This is a working bitch. She work in class. She's sitting up here. She's like, how can I serve you? Tip me when you're done. You understand? You don't like what she has to say, what you did on the page, tear it up, put a new one and start again. Put this in a fucking three ring binder. All you fancy bitches, you don't need to put this in your little fucking happy planner clicker that fucking makes it all fancy and shit. Put this in a three ring binder. Make this a worker. This is your working bitch for the year. Make this planner your bitch this year. Don't let her slack off. Put your stickers on her. Use your fucking highlighters. Do your cross outs on this. I want you to do all of this because at the end of the year, when we come back to this session next year, I want you to go, I am so fucking ready for a KDP one of these next year, sissy. And I'll be like, okay, we've had a year to work out the kinks. Let's fucking do this. Planners are so fucking useless. Have we all decided this? I, I'm here. They're so fucking useless. They give us fucking stories and fucking candle magic printouts and fucking moon printouts. What the fuck am I going to do with them? I'm not even going to open that bitch three times after I buy it. Don't fucking lie. You're the same fucking way. How many of you got an Amy Cesari that you didn't get past color, color in the first four pages? Don't fucking lie to me, you lying hoes. I know you're fucking lying. <laughs> Don't. I know it. <laughs> I fucking know it. Because we are the queens of... This is so aesthetically beautiful. I know. And you buy it and you don't use it. There's a reason this bitch is cheap and made for the beaten. Because I know if something is renewable, usable, and I can fuck it up and do it again, I will use it. I won't be afraid to touch it. Because when you're afraid to touch something, you're afraid to fuck up at it, you don't do it. This is a working piece of of grimoire. Now, I really hope over in the cackle, we can establish more beautiful grimoires. <laughs> that is my plan. But for this year, I really want you to sink into this planner and work on this. You can take your time. There will be added things to put in here. This seasonal planning is going to open a new aspect of your craft. This is pretty different than what you're hearing everywhere else, isn't it? You know why? Because weird shit don't sell. People don't like things that are different. What if we stumble upon what the goddess was looking for all along? What if that's what we're doing? Just what if? You know, I've been laying my ass across this divide as a bridge now for three years, right? Right? Why are some of you over there swimming when my fat ass is across the water? I'm just curious. Why are you fucking doing this shit? Beating yourselves up, getting fucking stuck, all that kind of shit when someone is offering to be a bridge for you. Can you explain that to me? Why you fucking make this so hard on you? I I'm just, you know, that's where I'm sitting right now. This is the simplest way I can show you guys what I'm doing. And I'm being honest. This is how I'm living my year. I have only bought two planners this year. I have gifted every other planner out. If you got high cup boxes at Maybon, you got my planners I bought. They're gone. I didn't keep them. I didn't want them. I'm done wasting money and time. I love paper. If any, if any of you know me, you know I got fucking paper everywhere. If you were lucky enough to be at my house at Maybon, you saw my corner of shame in my kitchen filled with fucking paper and books. The girls walk in my kitchen, they're like, wow. I'm like, yeah, that's how I roll. I got paper everywhere with binder clips on. And I save everything. 
because I might need it someday. What if you just took one year, all of you condo bitches, oh, it doesn't bring me joy, so I threw it away. What if you take one year, put it in the binder, work through it, go back, reflect on it. If you're only working three months, what a small amount of time to, com to commit to. That's a small amount. You're going to do lots of stuff for Yule anyway. What if this year for Yule, you only commit to 10 fucking Yule cards? Not 50, because I know you all have big fucking ambitions. But what if you took 10 and really made them count? In the Cauldron Cackle this year, we're trying something different. For the sisterhood, I'm assigning you one sister to send a Yule card to, to get to know, to exchange something with. One. Not 20. One. We need to understand that quality is way more important than quantity in our craft. Quality of the relationship you have with your goddess, your superior being, your deity, whoever you align yourself, yourself, whoever you are aligning yourself with is far superior than any classes you can take, any skills you can learn, or any things you can acquire in this craft. You can have it all and have nothing. And I see it in so many witches. Look at me. I'm so fabulous. Look at my hair and my makeup and my nails. Bitch, please. What's that soul look like? Because it's looking pretty fucking empty to me. A gratitude. Grace. Y'all take queen, don't you? I don't see a whole lot of queens anymore in the witch world. That makes me real fucking sad. I left my crown slip quite a bit in the past year. I'm working on it. It's hard. This sow and tide has been one of the hardest tides I've ever dealt with in my life. But you know what? I feel a lot better coming out of it with three shitty candles, some salt, and a whole bunch of bones. I've learned what's important. My seasons are important. Feeling the leaves, looking out last night and seeing that orange sky. Ooh, that shit hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit me. It's changing. Our world is changing and you can feel it. If you want to survive in this, and I know people are telling you they're burning witches, they're, bur they're not burning witches, we're burning each other. They're not burning us. They don't give a shit about us. We're a joke. We're a stereotype. We're something to beat around when they don't have anything else to beat around. When they tire of beating each other, they come beat us. Stop being a stereotype. Stop being a parlor trick. Stop being a point of contention. Stop being the, oh, she's weird. Do your craft for you. It's nobody else's fucking business what you're doing. You don't have to share it with everybody you fucking know. You don't have to stand on your soapbox. I know. I'm backpedaling a hundred fucking percent from when you met me a year ago. Get out there and tell everybody. Get out there and show everyone what the craft has done for you. Most women that I know that are deep in the craft have some of the kindest giving hearts I've ever met in my life. They're amazing humans. You can't even imagine the level of grace they have accomplished. And there ain't no sky daddy involved. There's nothing holding them to that. They're doing it because it's fucking right. You do the right thing at all costs, even if it sucks. I heard an older woman say something to me a couple years back. And when she said it, I laughed because it made me uncomfortable. Not because it was funny. Doing the right thing is never personally convenient. It's not. It's never really personally convenient. Because you have to step out of the what is easy to what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is not always that great. Let me tell you. <laughs> the everyday battle to maintain your religious practice in the midst of total chaos, not easy. You have to decide if this is your practice 
or this is your spiritual path. You have to make that decision. Is this something you're doing because it appeases you at the current moment? If that's your choice, I'm not going to look at you and go, get out of here. I'm going to still help you because you need to learn how to have it that it supports you and it's healthy for you. But I'm also going to tell you, you're never going to get out of it that a woman that it is her spiritual path will get out of it. You won't. You won't gain that deep peace. You won't gain that comfort. And I hate to say it. You won't get the love and light that comes with the dark and mean. There is balance. You do achieve goals and you do achieve lightness when you have conquered your dark. Someone said to me the other day, Sissy, you're getting soft. I am. Can't live with those demons in the dark anymore. They'll eat me alive. I've got to step out. Some of you are so hell-bent on living in your trauma that you've built a house there. You can't live in hell. You can't live there. You can't live in your shadow. It will kill you. You have to learn how to balance yourself. It is so important. Just like I would look at a white lighter and go, you can't live up there in fantasy land. You got to deal with what's going on in your life. You can't act like nothing is ever wrong. I'm sure all of you were in here one night with someone who told me everything goes right in her life and she doesn't understand. Good fucking luck with that. Every woman I know has her share of sorrow. Every magical worker I know has been through something fucking horrendous. And she's still standing. Because she's managed to balance it out. Was a shit show while she was doing it. She looked a little lit, like, like Jack Sparrow drunk off her fucking ass, falling all over the fucking place. But she got through, didn't she? Stop doubting yourselves. Give these seasonal turns a chance. You are so overwhelmed picking a word for the year, picking an intention to follow everything. Just focus on three months. And this one isn't that bad. We have this big season of joy in the center of it. This joy lives in December. It's not baby Jesus, but you know, nevertheless, if that is the joy you were raised with and that brings you joy. Okay, I got to I got to breathe deep because I'm about to say this. Okay, just calm down. <laughs> then you embrace that fucking joy. Okay? You embrace that fucking joy. If you can go to that joy and live in that season and embrace that in your craft, peace be with you. And as they always say, and also with you, be, be gone because that is where you belong. There is no harm, no foul. There are a lot of people who came to this path because they were very lost and they don't belong here. This is not where they belong. This is not home for them. And that's okay. You have to be true and authentic to what you believe and what you feel. I know my peace comes from sitting outside under the full moon, in the dark, in the freezing cold, with a warm fire and a cup of hot chocolate and mugwort in my hand. That's where my peace comes. When you find your peace, nothing can stop you from finding your magic. Some of you are so afraid to let go of your anger, your peace can never find you. So I'm going to encourage you while you're doing this season of winter that you really ask yourself some hard questions like, what's encumbering my peace? What is holding me back from finding my joy? And why do I feel guilty about being happy? Some people actually feel guilt about finding joy. It's almost like they have to suffer to succeed in life, and you don't. It is perfectly okay for things to go well in your life, you to have a happy marriage, you to have a happy home, you're content with what you have, and you create a life of happiness. That is fucking okay. 
You always don't have to be improving yourself. You always don't have to be running to the next goal. You can be content in life. But when you are a witch, there are certain things and seasons you're looking at and you're examining, not to change everything, but to make it just a little bit more comfortable for you in your magic. Some of you, this is going to be a very intense procedure. Others of you are going to write me and go, Sissy, I just love this. It's so easy. I just love it. It's so easy. Why did you never teach us like this? Because I was never comfortable being happy. I always thought there was something else. I learned over the past year what unhappiness truly looks like. I want to be fucking happy. I want to be happy every fucking day of my life without end. And believe me, if I thought another way would make it work for me, I'd have done it in a heartbeat. Freeing myself from the restraints of what other people believe I should be doing and how I should be practicing is the most important thing I ever did for myself. And it took me 45 years to do it. Some of you have never given yourself permission to take the driver's seat and make your own choices. This may not be for you. And you may leave right here, go to Amazon and buy that planner that you've been eyeing up and be like, fuck this bitch. She has no idea what she's talking about. I got to do all this stuff and I got to do it now and I got to have it all written out. And maybe I motivate you to use your fucking planner this year by this bullshit nonsense that someone will say oh, I've just spewed. But I am going to tell you, if you live your life seasonally, you will find more fulfillment in the actual real life you live. Not this Dungeons and Dragons reality you create for yourself because it looks great. You know, my husband always calls my witchcraft my Dungeons and Dragons time. He's going to play Dungeons and Dragons with your girlfriends? I'm like, yeah, fuck you. But he's right. For some witches, this is a role-playing game. They pretend to be something they're not. They move into something they wish they could be, and they don't do the legwork to become that. Stop playing a, a second-person shooter game. Live your authentic magic. Move through your life authentically. Do the things you can handle. Set attainable goals. And stop waiting for someone else to tell you how to fucking do it. This is all you need for a planner. I'm going to be fucking honest with you. This is all you need. You don't need everything else. And for heaven's sake, stop putting your muggle shit in your magical planners. Nobody cares about your fucking doctor's appointments, your dog's toenail trim, your fucking dentist appointment, your fucking haircut. That does not belong in your magical fucking planners. I see women who draw the line and they put... Kids to dentist, full moon ritual. What in the actual fuck? Come on. I understand we're integrating our children into our lives. I th oh, I'm sitting on that fucking high, high pedestal right now, motherfucker, okay? I haven't had a day away from my kid in like 63 days. <laughs> it might be 64 by now. Let me tell you what, it's a lot. It's fucking a lot. But it is my job. It is my sole purpose to be her mother. Why? I don't know. But it is. But I need to take time to be my magical self on top of that. Because if I don't, I can't do my sole job of being her mom well. Because I'm overwhelmed. You have to take time and separate out your magic to be the most authentic you can be. It's very important. So when you're making these dates in this, keep this one all magical. If you buy the fancy Vera Bradley one and you want to put all your other shit in there, yeah. Um, you're not going to get Zodiac shit from me for this planner. Feel free to print, print out your own Zodiac stuff and put in here. I'm not a Zodiac witch. You're not going to get a crystal formulary to put in here from me. That's not going to happen. Maybe one of these nice ladies in the cauldron cackle will make you a PDF to put into your fucking planner, but I'm not. Because I think when you get in touch with things, regular rocks and sticks and trees and flowers, these are natural things that are occurring to you. If you find amethyst in your backyard, I invite you 
to put that shit in your planner. If you're coming up across that on the daily in your background, I come across clear quartz crystal every day in my yard. It's all over my yard, everywhere, which tells me at some point there was a creek here that ran through my property. So there's clear quartz all over my property. I, I have fucking piles of it. My daughter piles it. She calls it fairy stones. They're here all the time. I use them around my cauldron. If these are things you're finding in your natural habitat, incorporate them in your witch work. This seasonal planner is all about being resourceful rather than going out and buying and inquiring and grabbing. I mean, how much was this class? Oh, free. How much was the PDF if you signed up? Three bucks. Nothing. Um, I've spent up to $85 on a fucking planner and never wrote in the motherfucker. I have four years of that really expensive ritual planner that I've never written in. Four years. Will I throw them away? No, I spent a lot of money on them. What purpose did they serve me? I'm done spending that kind of stuff on things I don't need anymore. Can we just get back to basics for a year, make our own shit, create our own needs, and service our own magic, and see where that takes us? Because I think it really is the key. So I am going to close the recording for now. Thank you for coming, ladies. If you have questions, you guys can hang around later. I'm going to shut this one out. If you are seeing this for the first time and you are not a member of the LHC, please come join us at www.thelunarhearthcauldron.com. We have a cauldron cackle. We have a new broom area. All the bells, buzzers, and whistles. My admin team will be happy I said this. Thanks for coming tonight and have a good one.